angry towards our partner. It's the dance that we're going to be filling out. We're going to be the flower within the frame that he provides for us. And the moment that we understand this, rather than going with aggression, more so with finesse and more so with resistance, that is very, very clearly directed, we're going to be able to actually produce a much, much better continuity into what we're doing. Yeah, because there is a staccato-ness about that dance, but the skillfulness about it is the, the thing that happens in between the beats. Yeah, does that make sense when I'm speaking about this? Very, very good. So um, today's first, actually, I'm going to get going straight into what um, I want to do with the with the object because we don't uh, always have so much time as I think I, we do. Uh, so guys, take whatever you have in your hands, right? Today I have the scarf. And I just want to explain to you a little bit about that shaping uh, mentality that you should have whenever you're doing this dance, okay? So whenever you are seeing a certain silhouette of that dance being danced, you see often that there is a predominant side and then a side that is less predominant that is going towards a certain direction, yeah? So you would never see, if I want to shade to one side, you would never see this tipping. You have actually your, your top very, very, very much over your feet. And what happens now, actually I'm going to leave this for a second. What happens now is that I am extending my right side upwards, yes? But then I'm extending my left side even higher than the right. So in other words, I'm going to turn my back to you so you can see that. I am not bending this and I'm stretching the left side. I am elevating my right side and then I'm elevating my left side even more. Yeah, Elevate also the, to the ball of the feet. So we're going to go forward, forward with the hips, we're going to extend the right side and we're going to extend the left side even, even further. Okay, so what I want you to do now is just the previous course that we have on the body wave. Whenever you start in a pasta like your knees should be relaxed, your feet should be together. We're going to straighten the knees towards our hips. So our knees are straightening so our hips can go forward. From that moment on, I have spoken about this before already. So I want you now to just sense what, what I'm going to speak about a lot is the upper body today. So I want you now to sense the opposition that is being created by the elbows continuing backwards and your spine continuing forwards. So I start from the feet again, release. I keep going into the knee towards the hip. And then from this point on, my belly button stays in. And now I want you to feel like your solar plexus continues forward as your elbows are continuing further back. So it should feel like someone is holding your elbows and putting you in the opposite direction. Let's do this again. So whoever has a scarf or a skirt, excellent. You can use that start from the front part. And now you're going to use the hips, use the knees. Press to the side. Now from here, do not do this. Yeah, You have to place the arms because of the body, right? It's an illusion in a way that this is what's happening. You see now this is very empty body. We are going to push the hands from the body. Yeah, So you can see that my 789, which is my bra clasp, is really pushing forward, and that makes the elbows go back as a result, okay? So let's try it again. We release one, two, three, four, push, 40, six, seven, eight, right? So let's go into a circle. So we start from here just to show you the trajectory. We start from here. We separate the arms, we go back with the elbows, and here is the bit that from this moment, in order for the elbows to go forward again, I need to retract my body in. Yeah? I can't do this, I, mean, I can, but it just looks very stiff. I want you to understand the principle that in order for me to move that, I need to throw my body first. I need to do something with the body for that arm to come. I don't want that arm to come without me doing anything in the body, right? So we're doing 
doing one more time, guys. So we release one, two, three, four, pushing five, six, and now on a seven, get back into the concave thing. A seven, eight. And on eight, we are a little bit more released here in the hip, just as we're about to sit on a chair. I'm not saying that this is not correct. I'm just doing the basic movement, yeah? Because on the basic movement one, here I need to be a little bit more relaxed. I'm not here, yeah? But we are gonna get to the other version soon. Ready? Eight, we go one, two, three, four, we five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Now, I sensed that I did it twice differently in a different speed, so also for my sake, I want to specify what are the uh, points we're going through during those eights, okay? So we are very, very clear where we're headed. So the one, we're gonna place the arms in, in front and you can cross them, that would be nice. That's our one. Now our two is our knees and our hip, which separates the arm, two, yes? Now continue, three, four, very much the same level, we're not raising the arms. We are feeling the weight towards the ball of the foot. Now, because the odd numbers are the accent in impasse doble, a five, a five, six is where we're elevating here. And now a seven, a seven, eight is where we are. A seven, eight, we're closing. And again, one, four, two, three, four, a five, six, Seven, eight, a one, two, three, four, five, six, in seven, eight, release, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, guys, so in order for me to accentuate the odd number. I need to give priority to the count of a, uh, which is prior to that number. So in this instance, we don't have to accent five, we're gonna accent a, uh, a uh, five, six, and here the same, a, uh, a uh, seven, eight. So seven is already part of what I have imposed on the a. Uh. It's the same thing when you're doing the head speed. A uh, one, two, three. Four and one, two, three. I'm going in, 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 in one. I'm not going one. That's very heavy. So if you just try this with me for a second, and preparation, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, keep going, three, four, and one, two, nice, three, four, and one. Very good, guys. Very good, can you feel the difference? So actually the end count is the one that makes the five, the seven, the one, or the three shine the most. So here I would love for you to really acknowledge that thought and do it very specific on the end five and on the end seven, yeah? So we'll do it together one more time. Five, we go six, seven, eight, and same here. And one, two, three, and five, six, and seven, eight, a one, two, three, four, and five, six, and seven, eight, a one, two, three, four, and five, six, in seven, eight, continue, one, two, three, four, and five, six, a seven, a one, two, three, four and five, six, seven, eight, and one. Very good. So I am watching you and I am noticing, of course, that there is a certain difficulty whenever you are going into this part, yeah? So uh, the opposition we're creating here is that we are projecting our seven, eight, nine points forwards whilst we are surrendering with our arms backwards. 
So here is where I'm seeing sometimes that you are taken by the fact that you're going back, so you're, everything goes back, or you're scared to do the opposition and you're going forward. So let's do this one more time and find exactly the timing of when that was to happen. So we have our one, two, three, four, and five, six, here, six. I have to have that forwardness and backwards with the arms and then retreat and seven. It, yes, body, body brings arms, body brings arms. Yes, good, I'm still seeing arms first. Okay, one more time. I know that this is a little bit challenging from here. Body, body brings the arm. Yes. For those of you who do gyrotonics, know very clearly that this is the feeling exactly, that in order for me to move that arm, do it with me, I'm not moving the arm, I'm moving the body in order to reach the arm. So the body moves the arm into a certain space. The same way here. Right? So there is an extension to extend the arm, and then there is a concave to pull the arm inwards. Okay, so we're going to do it one more time. There's already some questions flying here. I can see that. That's perfect. I just need to make sure that I can read that. Okay, give me one second. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, the hand and the fingers I will address in a second, darling. So one more time. Ready? Do it with the fabric. Five, six, Seven, eight, a one, two, three, four, a five, six, in seven, and one, two, three, four, a five, six, in seven, eight, a one, two, three, four, a five, six, a seven, eight, a one, two, three, four, a five, six, a seven, eight. Good. So now, not everybody has the same amount of flexibility in the joints whenever we need to bring this up and over. I know that, I know that. But what you need to then try is not to keep them too tight here. Try to feel that you're gonna go more here, guys. So for the arms to be from more side to go forward, it is easier. It's easier if they're here, and it gets harder if you go more back into forward. So of course the goal eventually is that you come from side, yeah, if we starting from let's say side to up to forward. This is your first week of trying, yeah? Now if you see me from the, from the profile, it would be here. And now you see my arms don't move. My body moves so it looks like my arms are moving. Look at my wrist. If my wrist would not move, it just looks like it's moving. I'm not doing this. And that is what is actually making you feel that you're troubled with the flexibility, where in fact, you're actually more flexible than you think. Put the body first through and retract the body to take it. Good, good. One more time from here to the side, body through and inwards. So with time, you're going to be able to bring them further back and forward. Yeah, that would be week two, week three, further on. Already better, guys. Already better. Yes, and remember, yeah, much, much better. Much, much better. You can also involve the head onto the seven, eight. So when you're doing this motion, you are here. Now you can involve also the head in order to close before you start into the next step again. Right? This is just an addition so you can feel the wholesomeness of that movement. Yeah, very, very good. Very good. Right. So everybody has specific moments where they struggle with, and that is totally okay. Recognize yours and time it very clearly. Yeah, now you know on every two beats what you should be doing. So it should be quite easy for you to recognize what to change. Yeah? So let me see you do it one more time and we continue furthermore. Five, six, seven, eight. We release. Two, three, four, a five, six, in seven. Super. One, two, three, four, a five, six, a seven. Eight. Oh, my. very, very good, guys. Very good. My observation is that a five is a bigger accent than a seven in this particular movement. So don't try to do 
a little bit here and then do a lot here. It's not that it's impossible, but what happens is that when you do it, you go seven and there is no eight. Seven, there needs to continue. There needs to be an echo. So in other words, one, two, three, four. When you go from here, a five, devote more to the five and soften the seven. I would like you to try a little bit more. The punch on the five, soften on the seven, eight. Okay, ready? Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, punch, five, six, seven, beautiful. And one, two, three, four, punch, five, six, seven, eight, one. Beautiful, guys. Great. So, what is now new to many of you is the seven, eight feeling. Okay, so the seven, eight feeling that we're doing at the moment is quite the opposite of the five six because the five six was here now what i am doing so my five six my hips are very forward on the uh, seven eight i'm actually going opposite so you see that so now my hips are staying forward but my rib cage is going into this direction inwards and i'm seeing still that from here you're doing it from the shoulders and this is keeping so from this feeling of forwardness, you need to rebalance backwards. Yes, very good. I can see some of you trying this. So pay more attention to that one more time. Five, six, seven, eight. A one, two, three, four. A five, six, and seven, eight. Release a one, two, three, four. A five, six, and seven, eight. Not bad, guys. Not bad for a start. Yeah, can you feel the difference? Yeah, I know that it works one time, then five times doesn't work, but that's okay. You're gonna turn that ratio around further and more, right? Just a quick note about the arms. We are going from here. My recommendation would be to open the wrists outwards. So when they're opened outwards, then you turn them and release them. There is a bigger motion. If you just do this to this, it's a lot less. So when you go down, boom, right, you're here. Now from here, we're, we're keeping this, and then they're going upwards towards the sky, and then inwards again, pushing towards the floor, right? And then one, again, two, here, backwards, then they're going upwards, then they are going towards the floor. Yeah, so just when you're practicing this, you can involve a little bit more attention to this feeling of where the wrists are headed. But as I said, I think I wanna spend a separate lesson on this. What I want you to get used to very much is the motion that the body produces the full range of the arm. Now, we're gonna do another exercise, which is very much